Namaste. Welcome back to the session of Turbo Machines. In the previous session, we have gone through the the process or the way of writing the velocity triangles for Francis turbine, and uh, we have looked into various efficiencies related to the Francis turbine, such as uh, hydraulic efficiency, volumetric efficiency, mechanical efficiency. By combining all those things, we have looked into overall efficiency too. So now uh, in this session, now uh, we will be looking onto one of the component of the reaction turbine, which is nothing but the draft tube. Uh, while explaining the working principle of the Francis turbine, we have seen this, but we have to understand the science with which the draft tube is working. So because of that, we have uh, segregated draft tube separately, and we are trying to understand uh, how draft tube is going to function and what is the need of draft tube in reaction turbines only. That is what we are trying to understand now. So now I have written the draft tube sketch. So this portion is nothing but the draft tube. So now if I have to define the draft tube, this draft tube is nothing but the simple divergent section which is provided at the exit portion of the runner in such a way that smaller portion of the draft tube is attached to the exit of the runner and uh, larger portion of the draft tube is uh, immersed inside the tail race. So that is what is the draft tube definition, a simple divergent cone which is attached to the exit portion of the runner. You need to make sure that smaller portion of the draft tube is attached to the exit portion of the runner and the outlet part, I mean larger portion, the diverged portion of the draft tube should be immersed inside the tail race. The next thing is why this draft tube is required. What is the necessity of this draft tube in reaction turbines? That is the question. So now uh, try to understand the sketch. I have written the runner. To the runner exit, I have attached the draft tube. Smaller portion of the draft tube is attached to the runner exit and larger portion of is immersed inside the tail race. So now uh, we knew once uh, the fluid is uh, reacted with the blades of the turbine, the fluid energy is converted into mechanical energy. If the fluid is processing pressure energy or velocity energy, that has to be absorbed by the blades and then that should be converted into mechanical energy. That is what is the basic principle of working of the turbine. So now, while leaving the turbine, the fluid is going to possess certain amount of kinetic energy. That means the fluid is coming out from the turbine with certain velocity. The velocity of the fluid will not be equal to zero at the outlet portion of the turbine. You have to agree with this because fluid has to move. Now the question is with what velocity it is coming out. If the velocity of the fluid at the outlet part of the run is more than kinetic energy utilized by the turbine is less. That means if velocity of the fluid at the exit of the runner is more in the sense we are wasting the kinetic head that is available for the turbine. So that is what is the thing we need to concentrate on. For that purpose I have uh, given certain notations over here, try to understand the notations. Uh, the one I mean the one refers to turbine inlet, two refers to turbine outlet, 3 refers to tur draft tube inlet, 4 refers to draft tube outlet. All these points are uh, entry and exit points of the fluid at various positions. So now 1 turbine inlet, 2 turbine outlet, 3 draft tube inlet, here it is 3, 4 draft tube outlet. So now the question is uh, if the draft tube is attached to the exit portion of the runner then turbine outlet should be equal to draft tube inlet 2 should be equal to 3 but i have uh, written 2 and 3 separately because in case from the outlet portion of the turbine while entering the entering into the draft tube if there are any losses any leakage losses then there will be a change in the pressure as well as the velocity by considering that turbine outlet has been segregated from draft tube inlet 2 and 3 are different if they mention there is no leakage from turbine outlet to the draft tube inlet then turbine outlet should be equal to draft tube 
inlet. We need to concentrate on that. So now my intention should be focused on draft tube inlet and draft tube outlet. So now let us try to understand the velocity with which the fluid is coming out from the runner. Runner outlet is nothing but 2. So V2 square by 2G is the kinetic head with which the water should leave the turbine. So this is the velocity, I mean kinetic head possessed by the fluid while it is coming out from the turbine outlet. Now, if this value is reduced, if V2 is reduced, then what do you mean by reduction in the V2? V2 is reduced in the sense more amount of kinetic head has been utilized by the turbine itself. If that has to happen, then draft tube has to be provided to make sure that at the exit V2 square by 2G is as minimum as possible. By providing the draft tube, what we are trying to make, what we are trying to achieve, that is the question. So now, please try to look onto this. Say, at the turbine outlet, V2 square by 2G is the velocity or kinetic head possessed by the fluid. Now, if this value is more, then kinetic head is getting lost. Keep that in mind. By providing this draft tube, what we are trying to make is, this kinetic head is, whatever the kinetic head available at the runner exit is utilized to increase the pressure head. In the sense, at this portion, I mean at the runner outlet, we have certain kinetic head as well as the pressure head. Now, if we increase the pressure with which the water is leaving the turbine, thereby the draft tube, if the pressure is going to increase automatically for subsonic flow in the divergent portion, velocity is going to decrease. Keep that in mind. In the divergent portion for the subsonic flow, for an incompressible subsonic flow, in the divergent portion, kinetic head will be converted into pressure head, thereby velocity is getting reduced. So now, in this portion, kinetic head V2 square by 2G is getting converted into pressure head. Pressure is going to rise inside the draft tube. Pressure rising in the sense the velocity is getting reduced. More amount of velocity which is getting reduced will be utilized by the turbine itself. That is why this portion has been provided. So now, what is the velocity with which the water is leaving the draft tube? Draft tube outlet is V4 square, I mean V4. So now kinetic head at the outlet of the draft tube is V4 square by 2G. This is the kinetic head. Make sure this is kinetic head. I am talking with respect to the kinetic head. So V4 square by 2G is the kinetic head at the outlet portion of the draft tube. V2 square by 2G should be the kinetic head at the turbine outlet. What was our intention? We need to reduce the value of V2 square by 2G kinetic head. Now, by providing the draft tube, we are achieving that. So, V2 square by 2G should be what? It is actually greater than V4 square by 2G. So, now that means what? V4 is lesser than V2. Please concentrate on this. V4 is lesser than V2. By providing the draft tube, whatever the exit velocity which was V2, which has been converted into V4 and V4 is much, much lesser than that of V2. By reducing the velocity, thereby increasing the pressure head, we are making more amount of kinetic head is absorbed by the runner and hence more power is getting generated thereby the efficiency of the reaction turbine will increase. So this is what is the concept behind the draft tube to reduce the kinetic head at the exit of the turbine. So now if I apply the Bernoulli's principle for draft tube section, we know Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle 
energy along the streamline is constant. So now inlet of draft tube, it is one other form of conservation of energy which is equal to outlet of draft tube. So now various heads at the inlet of the draft tube will be equal to various heads at the outlet of the draft tube. Now at the inlet we have pressure head P by rho G plus kinetic head at the inlet of the draft tube kinetic head V square divided by 2G plus now at the inlet of the draft tube we need to look on to amount of head possessed by the draft tube HD is the delivery head plus H is the head of the tail race both the things needs to be added over here this is the potential which has to be possessed inside the draft tube height of the tail race plus delivery head inside the draft tube so this is at the inlet section of the draft tube which should be equal to pressure plus pressure head plus kinetic head plus if there are any frictional losses which happens inside the draft tube then i will call it as HF, make sure HF is the frictional losses that may be occurring inside the draft tube while the fluid is flowing through the draft tube. So now I will give the notations, inlet side of draft tube is given the notation 3 and outlet is given with the notation 4. So inlet portion is given as P3 by rho G, V3 square by 2G plus HD plus D which will be equal to P4 divided by rho G plus V4 square divided by 2g plus hf make sure in that equation p3 by rho g is the pressure head pressure head or pressure possessed by the fluid while entering into the draft tube this is the pressure head pressure energy possessed by the fluid while entering into the draft tube and p4 by rho g is the pressure possessed by the fluid at the exit portion of the draft tube. This pressure head should be greater than this pressure head. That is what is the function of draft tube. So now one more thing, inlet of the draft tube condition is 3 notation. If there are no losses in between turbine outlet and the draft tube inlet, that means the condition 3 will be equal to condition 4. I mean condition 2, turbine outlet will be equal to draft tube inlet. All the three suffixes should be replaced by 2 if turbine outlet is equal to draft tube inlet. So here make sure this is the pressure head at the inlet of the draft tube, pressure head at the outlet of the draft tube. Pressure possessed by the fluid at the outlet should be greater than that of the pressure which is possessed at the inlet of the draft tube so that kinetic head will be reduced at the outlet thereby efficiency of the runner I mean efficiency of the turbine will be increased. So this is what is the things related to draft tube and if you want this draft tube to be manufactured we can go through a steel plate the metals which can be used are steel plate or concrete in most of the situations concrete structures are used. So these two are the uh, widely used uh, uh, substances are widely used materials to construct the draft tube and one more thing we need to look on to is uh, this cone angle for this type of uh, draft tubes for simple divergent draft tubes this cone angle should not exceed should not exceed 8 degrees for simple divergent draft tubes the cone angle should not exceed 8 degrees if it is exits, uh, I mean if it uh, exceeds uh, 8 degree, then what happens? If that is so, then this will be wide. The draft tube will be wide and then formation of eddies takes place at the corners. So this eddy formation should be avoided because energy loss is going to happen because of that cone angle is limited to less than 8 degree for simple divergent draft tubes. So this is the science behind the draft tube. If you want to look on to efficiency of the draft tube, efficiency is denoted by eta suffix D, D stands for draft tube. If we want to look on to the efficiency of the draft tube separately, then 
efficiency is defined as kinetic head which is used to increase the pressure head divided by kinetic head that is available in at the inlet portion of the draft tube. Try to understand that. This is the kinetic head V3 square by 2G is the kinetic head which is available at the inlet of the draft tube V3 square by 2G. Next in this V3 square by 2G part will be utilized I mean part of the V3 I mean kinetic head at the inlet is utilized to rise the pressure head and after rising the pressure head what is the kinetic head which is possessed at the outlet which is nothing but V4 square by 2G this is the kinetic head at the outlet along with that what you will be having while flowing we will be having HF frictional losses divided by kinetic head which is available at the inlet of the draft tube is V3 square by 2G so try to understand this V3 square by 2G is the available kinetic head at the inlet once it passes through the draft tube we will have V4 square by 2G at the outlet if I subtract V3 square by 2G I mean V4 square by 2G from V3 square by 2G we will get the amount of kinetic head utilized by the draft tube if any frictional losses are there that should also be eliminated divided by original kinetic head which is available at the inlet portion of the draft tube which is nothing but V3 square by 2G. So this is what is going to give us the efficiency of draft tube and which will be usually expressed in, ter in terms of a percentage. So now if we need overall efficiency of the plant then we have looked on to various efficiencies hydraulic efficiency actual hydraulic efficiency actual hydraulic efficiency is nothing but multiplication of hydraulic efficiency and volumetric efficiency if we multiply these two things with the mechanical efficiency then we will get overall efficiency along with that if they have mentioned the draft tube efficiency this should also be taken care in order to look into overall efficiency so that is where this plays a very important role so this is what is uh, the science behind uh, the working of draft tube and uh, the efficiency will be defined in this way and we have various uh, types of uh, draft tube also but in our syllabus we will be looking on to simple divergent draft tubes if you want other types of uh, draft tubes which are in use i will write other types of uh, draft tubes now types of draft tube types of draft tube which are in common use very first one is uh, a simple straight a simple straight type draft tubes which is nothing but simple divergent draft tube second one is moody's design moody's design next one is a simple divergent simple divergent elbow type simple divergent elbow type and the last one is elbow type split exit areas elbow type split exit area type of draft tube so these are the four commonly used types of draft tubes first one is a simple straight type which is nothing but what we have written over here simple straight divergent section moody's design which was proposed by the scientist moody simple divergent elbow type elbow in the sense it will go in this fashion it will go in this fashion say it will go in this fashion if you want uh, elbow type split exit areas then it will be it will look like this at the exit we will have split exit areas so all these three four types of uh, draft tubes are in common use but we will be looking on to simple divergent type of uh, draft tube in our practice and in our syllabus also we have the problems on very first simple type of draft tube that is why we are not discussing much about the various types of uh, draft tubes over here 
So now what we should be aware of is what is draft tube, what is the function of draft tube and how we are going to define the efficiency of the draft tube. So that is what is important in this section. And then we have ended up with all the theoretical aspects related to Francis Turpin. Now let us look on to the problematic section. Okay, let us start with the problem now. Let me read the problem once so that uh, we will uh, write the data very easily. In a Francis turbine, so given turbine is Francis turbine, radial inflow turbine, the discharge is radial in the sense the outlet flow is, I mean the fluid is going in the fashion of radial, radial flow discharge is happening. The blade speed at the inlet, the blade speed the rotor speed at the inlet is 25 meters per second. Look onto that which is nothing but U1. U1 is nothing but the rotor speed at the inlet which is 25 meters per second. At the inlet tangential component of the velocity is 18 meters per second. What do you mean by that? We know absolute velocity of the fluid is V1. Its tangential component is VU1. Its vertical component is VF1. I mean horizontal component is VU1 and vertical component is VF1 which is nothing but flow velocity. Now tangential component of absolute velocity is given which is nothing but VU1. So VU1 is 18 meters per second. The radial velocity of flow is constant and it is equal to 2.5 meters per second. Now he is speaking with respect to the flow velocity. What do you mean by flow velocity here? What kind of turbine he has given to us which is nothing but radial discharge turbine, radial flow is happening, the flow type is radial, the flow velocity is radial velocity which is equal to 2.5 meters per second. So now radial flow is constant what he has mentioned so Vf will be equal to Vf1 which will be equal to Vf2 which is equal to 2.5 meters per second. Why Vf1 is equal to Vf2? Because uh, he has mentioned flow is constant. Water flow at the rate of 0.8 meter cube per second. If you look onto the unit, meter cube per second is the unit of discharge Q. Utilization factor is a 0.82. He has given the utilization factor which is nothing but the epsilon. Epsilon is a 0.82. If it is uh, usable at any cost, we will use this one. Find Euler's head power developed inlet blade angle as well as DOR which is nothing but degree of reaction along with that we need to draw velocity triangles. So now very first thing is Euler's head notation is H E E stands for Euler's Euler's head second one is power developed by the turbine inlet blade angle of the turbine degree of reaction R. So now Initially, if we write the velocity triangles for the given case, then it will be very easier for us to solve the problems. So now, let us look on to the velocity triangle. How to write the velocity triangle? We have discussed in the previous session itself. So now, initially we need to look on to these two. Inlet velocity triangle writing is a very important role and outlet velocity triangle is very simple because the exit will be the radial. That is what he has given to us. So now U1 is 25 meter per second, V1 is 18 meter per second. If you look on to these two, blade is running at a huge speed than that of the tangential component of absolute velocity V1. So this is the case of U1 is greater than V1. So I need to write the velocity triangle for a case U1 is greater than V1. So u1 is greater than v1 that is what I have written here v1 absolute velocity angle made by v1 is alpha 1 inlet fluid angle vu1 is nothing but the distance between flow velocity and the absolute velocity vu1 and the distance between relative velocity and the absolute velocity is u1 vr1 is making an angle of beta 1 with the blade angle v1 is making a, an angle of alpha 1 with the blade rotation which is nothing but alpha 1. In the same fashion outlet triangle has to be written. We know flow velocity is constant here Vf1 will be equal to Vf2 which is equal to Vf and which is also equal to V2 because 
because Vu2 is equal to 0 and alpha 2 is equal to 90 degree for a radial flow turbine. So, Vu2 is equal to 0 and alpha 2 equals 90 degree makes Vf is equal to V2. So, now beta 2 is the angle made by Vr2 and Vu2 is equal to 0 at this portion because of that alpha 2 is 90 degree and distance between Vf and Vr is nothing but the U2 because of Vu2 is equal to 0. So, now the question is inlet blade angle only beta 1. So, I need to find beta 1 by using this velocity triangle. Velocity triangles are written to look on to blade angles only. So, very first part of the problem is over now. We have written the velocity triangle. Let us look on to the various unknowns now. Very first unknown is uh, Euler side or Euler side. You can pronounce it as Euler side also. This Euler's head has to be calculated with the help of the Euler's equation what we have derived in the very initial stage itself. Euler's equation was E is equal to U1 VU1 plus R minus U2 VU2. You can remember that E is equal to U1 VU1 plus R minus U2 VU2. We know VU2 is equal to 0 since the discharge is radial. So, VU2 goes off I will be remain with U1 VU1. For an incompressible fluid or incompressible flow E can also be written as G into H. This H is HE. What I have written here is HE. HE stands for Euler's head which is nothing but the theoretical head which is available for the turbine. So, for an incompressible flow GHE itself is energy transfer which is equal to U1 VU1 because VU2 is equal to 0. Now, E is equal to GHE is equal to substitute values of U1 VU1 25 into 18. So, GHE becomes 450 joules per kg. This is the value of G into HE. This is the amount of energy transfer happening per kg of fluid. Now, if you want Euler's head, then Euler's head is 450 divided by, send the G onto the other side, G, 450 divided by 9.81. We will get the Euler's head or Euler's head as 45.87 meters. This is the theoretical head which is available for the fluid. So, Euler's head has been found as 45.87 meters. Very first unknown is over now. Euler's head has been found. Next, power generated by the turbine. We know power generation is given by rho q g h. Since I am utilizing the Euler's head, I will substitute g h e. This g h e is nothing but what? E. I will replace g h e by E. So, now rho for the water is 1000, q is 0 0.8, g h e is 450 power generation or power generated by the turbine becomes 360 kilo watts. So, that is the second unknown what we are about to find. So, power generated by the turbine is 360 kilo watts. Next unknown is a inlet blade angle. Inlet blade angle is notated by beta 1. So, now if I want beta 1, if you look onto the velocity triangle, this beta 1 can be expressed with the tan beta 1 tan beta 1 is nothing but opposite by adjacent, opposite is Vf, adjacent is this much. What is this? U1 minus the Vu1. So, now opposite by adjacent is tan beta 1. We should be aware of U1 and Vu1, they have given, but we have not, we are very aware of Vf also, Vf we can easily find. So, now tan beta 1 is Vf, they have given the Vf divided by U1 minus Vu1. Vf is 2.5, they have provided U1 25 minus Vu1 is 18. So, beta 1 inlet blade angle becomes 19.65 degrees. So, that is the third unknown what they have asked for us, beta 1. And the fourth unknown is a degree of reaction. So, now degree of reaction equation is R, which is nothing but theoretical head, Euler's head minus amount of head which has been spent or which has been absorbed by the turbine divided by theoretical head. Available theoretical head minus energy utilized divided by available theoretical head. Inside this, we have HE. HE value is known to us. We have V2. What is that V2? V2 is nothing but Vf. We are very aware of value of Vf and 2 into G. G is known to us, but we are not aware of V1. If you want to find the value of V1, please look onto the velocity triangle. This V1 needs to be found. If you look onto this triangle, right angle triangle, V1 square 
is equal to VU1 square plus VF square. Pythagoras theorem that I have applied over here, V1 will be equal to square root of VF square. This VF is equal to VF1 plus VF, sorry, VF1 which is equal to VF2 which is equal to V2 also. VF square plus V1 square. Both the values are known to us. Upon substitution, we have the absolute velocity of the fluid at the inlet which is nothing but V1 as 18.17 meter per second. By making use of this V1, I will be finding the value of R. Now, Euler said V1, V2, 2 into G. All the values are known to us and the degree of reaction for the given Francis turbine is 0 0.64. We know it is not a 50 percent reaction turbine. The reaction is more than 50 percent. It is very clear it is a reaction turbine because of that the R is existing and it is too clear it is having a reaction of 64 percent. So, this is how you need to find the various unknowns for the given Francis turbine. So, this is what is uh, for the today's session. We will meet in the next session. Till then, Namaste.